In this video, let's see how you can create a laser effect like Mr. Beast, how to search and find high-resolution images for your thumbnails, how to remove harsh skin highlights, and in the end, I'm breaking down the pinboard thumbnails. I hope you will find it useful. Red lasers, blue lasers, green lasers. Lasers are very cool. I like them. You like them. Mr. Beast likes them. So let's see how to make them from scratch in Photoshop. As a reference, I'll use this amazing thumbnail from Mr. Beast that was created by his design team of very talented people. So inside this mini playground, I'll create the base of the laser. On a brand new layer, I'll draw a canvas long white line with a height of 15 pixels. Then I'll turn it into a smart object and apply it Gaussian blur. You can experiment with the numbers here, but I find the pixel radius of around five to look the best for me. After this, let's add some color by creating a new layer and making sure the blend mode is linear dodge add. I'll take a red color sample from the reference thumbnail as my foreground color, and then with the soft brush tool, I'll draw over the base white line. But before you do this, make sure the brush flow is low. Somewhere around five is totally acceptable. Once all of this is set in place, go to the left side of the line and click once, then go to the very end on the right side and while holding the shift button on your keyboard, click again. And now do it one more time, but going in reverse order. This will create a nice red outline and you've got yourself a very solid laser beam right here. And if you want to take this laser beam one step further, let's create a new linear dodge add layer and repeat the same process. The key differences in this step are that we're doing it with a bigger round brush and we're drawing the outline only once. So it's not as strong as the first one. And if we take a closer look at the reference thumbnail, we'll notice there are a bunch of scattered sparks and glowing particles all around, which we don't have at the moment. So let's do something about it. Thankfully, I have just updated the Thumbnails Plus and the free Thumbnails Mini Pack, so there are some great assets that can be used to solve this problem. For example, this orange sparks graphic is perfect for this. I'll rasterize it and change the blend mode from normal to screen. Then I'll position it on top of the laser. But considering it's too big, I need to stretch it in. Something like this looks great, but there shouldn't be any other colors. So here's a pro tip. The easiest way to remove the color from any rasterized layer is to press the control or command plus shift plus letter U on the keyboard, all at the same time. And there we have it. It looks perfect. And if you want to change the intensity, you can change the blend mode from screen to linear dodge add. But I won't do it now, so let's undo this step. To finally place the laser beam in the scene, I'll select all the layers and convert them into one smart object. To get rid of the black background, I'll just change the blend mode to screen. And now, when I move it around, it pretty much fits perfectly in the existing reference thumbnail scene. However, the center white part of the laser beam isn't quite as strong as the rest of the lasers, so I'll just create a new curves adjustment layer and enhance the whites. It is as simple as that. But let's say now that I want to add another laser beam on top of this, and I would really like to add more sparks around their intersection. Well, lucky for me, and I guess everyone else who owns the Thumbnails Plus Assets Pack, I'll just use one of the other Sparks images from the pack. I'll draw a selection around this tiny spark to cut it out, and then place into the scene. Using the previously shown methods, I'll blend it with the rest of the elements. In this quick video, let's see how you can find high-resolution images for your thumbnails. Yesterday, we finally introduced the weekly challenge events which are hosted in the Thumbnails 101 Discord server. This week's challenge is to create a thumbnail that's similar to this one, but I'm already seeing questions like these. Go to Google Images and search whatever you're looking for. The initial results are generally low resolution like this one. In order to change the results you're getting, click on this Tools button and then open the Advanced Search. Inside the advanced search, go to image size and open the drop down menu. Considering 2 megapixels are equal to 1920 by 1080 resolution, I generally choose this option when searching for thumbnail assets. But if you're looking for something in ultra high resolution, choose any of the options below. When you're done setting up all your desired parameters, click on advanced search button and simply enjoy the high quality image results. Within the next 60 seconds, I'll show you the laziest, but also the most efficient way to remove harsh skin highlights. So here I am working on this mister who's the boss thumbnail, and I've come to the part where I need to remove these harsh skin highlights from his face, cheeks, forehead, ears, and the nose. 
The best way to do it is to create an empty new layer and manually paint over the highlights. I'll select the default round brush and make sure the edges are soft. Then, I'll make sure the brush flow is set to very low. Something like 1 or 2% works really well. And then, by holding the Option button on Mac or Alt button on Windows, I'll sample the skin color from areas around the highlights. After that, I'll simply just start painting over the highlights to reduce their visibility. As you can see, I'm sampling colors from all around the face so it can end up looking more realistic when I'm finished. And now that I'm done with this, you can see the clear improvement with before and after. This process took me less than 60 seconds, and look at the significant difference it made in the finished thumbnail. Truly incredible. In this quick video, let's break down the pinboard thumbnails. These thumbnails have been around for quite a while, and even though my fellow thumbnail designer friend Dilly has already made a very good tutorial on how to make these, here I am with one of my own. Sort of. To break it down, let's start with the main element that ties everything together, the pinboard itself. You can easily find a bunch of these stock textures just by searching pinboard on the web. Next, you have the main frame inside which you're going to place the image of your subject. In this example, I'll have Mr. Beast. After that, you want to either create your own shapes for the image placeholders around the main frame, or find something on the internet. In many of these thumbnails, you'll notice a newspaper, or just the regular paper cutouts used to place these images. Next, to diversify the elements, you can add a sticky note in there. And when you have these elements in their places, fill them out with text or something else that's going to be intriguing to a viewer. We'll obviously add the red lines connecting everything together, but first, let's add a bunch of these tapes to prevent the images from falling down. And once you're done with this, you can fill out the empty areas with other assets. In this example, I'll just add some cash here on the right. Next is adding the mainframe text. Those are usually punchy red rectangles like this one, with bold white text to make it really pop. After this, just add the red pins to all of the images, and then connect everything with the red lines. As a finishing touch, add a subtle overlay to guide the viewer's eyes toward the center. The great thing about this approach is that you can experiment with different overlays that serve the same purpose, but each one can completely transform the overall vibe of the thumbnail. And, of course, don't forget to add the shadows as they are key to creating depth and dimension. Next time you're creating a pinboard thumbnail, keep these small details in mind and you'll end up with an incredible thumbnail. But don't forget to add your own touch, as this will help you stand out in the vast sea of YouTube thumbnails. And for the end, I should let you know that if you want, you can download this exact pinboard template alongside these two, which is all a part of Thumbnails Plus Assets Pack. And for the very end, let me show you the pinboard template PSD file. When you open it, you will notice three templates at the very top. Every element from these three thumbnails is 100% editable, just like everything else in Thumbnails Plus. You can move these elements around and rearrange everything to your liking and needs. Or, if you just need a quick pinboard thumbnail with Fiery Vibe, for example, you can open this project file, replace the images and text, and you're done in just a few minutes. It doesn't get any easier than this. And speaking of editing these templates and replacing the text, images, and other elements, here's a quick walkthrough for the best approach. When you open the main PSD file, instead of editing it within the smart object, I would suggest to first copy the template layer, and then place it inside a brand new project. The optimal dimensions of your canvas would be 1920 by 1080 pixels, so keep this in mind to avoid possible scaling and positioning struggles. To have more ease with editing, right-click on the layer and click on the Convert to Layers. This will unpack all the layers from the smart object inside this layer group. To replace the images, locate the corresponding layer. Then open the smart object and place whatever you want. For the showcase purposes, I'll just create a solid color adjustment layer. Then, in order to replace the text, simply locate the layer. Open the Type tool by pressing T on your keyboard, and type whatever you desire. The same approach goes for the text on this yellow note as well. To go one step further, you can open the note's Smart Object. Inside, you can change the color through this Gradient Map Adjustment layer. There's also one more Gradient Map masked only to affect the pin on the note, in case you want to change that color as well. Next, if you want to edit the tapes from this template, you can open the group where every single one is located. Here, you can move them around individually, but you can also select all of them and change the opacity percentage if you feel like it. And if you change the blending mode to screen, these notes will appear white. And next up, 
we've got the red lines. Those are all individual shape layers, meaning you can manipulate the length and position of each one. Before editing these lines, go to View and make sure the Extras option is turned on. While this feature is turned on, open the Direct Selection tool. You can do it by pressing A on your keyboard. Once this tool is selected, you'll notice these dark blue lines will appear. And as you can see, you can select the intersection of multiple of these lines and simply move them around all at once. But if you want to manipulate only one line at a time, just select its layer and move each of the endpoints to wherever you desire. Lastly, there are these red pins on the board holding the lines, which you can freely move around the canvas as well. Notice that all of these pins are smart objects too, meaning you can open each one. Inside, you can enable the glare layer, which will remove the white glare point from the pin. And also, there's the standard adjustment layer to change the color. On the other hand, if you're feeling creative and want to design your own layout, you can open the Pinboard Playground group, where I've prepared over 100 different elements categorized for you to create your unique looking pinboard thumbnail. As you can see, the categories include the following. Different boards for the background, frames for the main subject of your video, main text placeholders, image placeholders surrounding the main frame, elements like notes and tapes, lines to connect everything, and finally, a beautiful set of 30 overlays that add a subtle layer of uniqueness to this very popular thumbnail style.